lived in the heavens. And they were enjoying the blessings of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our mother and father not to go near a certain tree. Now he knew of this and he thought, yeah, this is my chance. He came to our mother and father and said, مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا أَنْ هَذِي شَجَرَةً إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَا مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَا مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only reason Allah doesn't want you to go near this certain tree is because you will begin to live forever and ever. You will never die. Or you will become angels. And the Quran says, وَقَاسَمُهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ And he began to make qasam this, qasam that, that I'm speaking the truth and I want only good for you. Before you even know it, he's, he's executed his plan. And our mother and father are taken out of Jannah and are placed on the dunya. Now, it is our turn. He took an oath that he will lead us all astray. And he works in six stages. The first stage that he works on is called Martabatul Kufr. He tries his utmost best to take a believer out of the fold of Islam by attacking his aqidah, by attacking his iman, by attacking his tawheed, by creating doubts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before you even know it, and he does this so swiftly, so cunningly that before you even know it, he's robbed you of your iman. Let me give you an example. I'm sure you've all heard of Mystic Meg. Gosh, you have, look at the smiles on these faces. And now you've all woken up. So you've all heard of who Mystic Meg is, and you've all probably know what these horoscope signs are. Of course we do. If you tell us your date of birth, we'll tell you yours. We know more off by heart, isn't it? Hundreds and thousands of Muslims read these horoscope signs, especially our sisters. And they have begun to believe that what's written in this sign is true. And they use this sign, what is written in their specific sign, to determine his actions and determine what he's going to do tomorrow. Here, the shaitan has had to go at your iman without you even realizing, without you even thinking there's anything wrong in it. And how did it all begin? Generally, this is what happens. You pick up the paper. You're flicking through the paper. And your eyes fall on these columns. And you remark, what a load of rubbish. This is the first time. And you flick it again and throw the paper to one side. And read the sports column. Next time you buy the paper, you're flicking through again. And you saw the same column. And this time... You read the rubbish without any interest, without any belief. Third time you buy the paper and you read your sign, a past paper, you've actually seen something there which actually happened in your life. Or to the effect, now he's created interest. Now you don't regard it as rubbish. It's interesting now. The fourth time you read, the interest is building. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Before you even know it, he's got you believing in this sign. What is written in this sign, without you even realizing this is against the Tawheed. Why? What does the Quran say? The Quran says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا حُبْ Only Allah and Allah alone knows what is going to happen tomorrow. Nobody can tell you what is going to happen in the future. Yeah? But you have begun to believe that these people also know what is going to happen tomorrow. Yet, to believe that anybody besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is going to happen tomorrow is shirk. And whoever commits the sin of shirk, the Quran says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرْ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرْ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لَمَنْ يَشَاءَ If you commit shirk, you can pray all your life. You can fast all your life. You can do good deeds 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right till the day you die. And if you're committing shirk at the same time, and you die on shirk, the Quran says, مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مَنْ أَنصَارِ Then there's only one place you're going, and that is the fire of hell. And we don't even realize that we are committing this sin. Let me tell you how these mystic meg, and how these soothsayers, and how these palm readers, and these fortune tellers or these, these tea leaves or these fortune cookies and all these programs work. Before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before our Prophet came to this world, the shayateen would use the likes of Mystic Meg 
these palm readers to lead people astray. Now the shayateen would go to the heavens. They'd go to the heavens and they would listen to the angels discussing some matters which were going to take place on the dunya. Whatever they would hear, they would convey to the soothsayers, to these palm readers. And because what they had heard, had heard was from the heavens, it would turn out to be true. The soothsayers would convey the message to the people. And because it turned out to be true, the people's belief would increase in these soothsayers. Now this is what would happen before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to the dunya, this all came to an end. The heavens were blocked and meteors were thrown at those shayateen that intended to start news of the unseen. When this happened, the shaitan said to one another, the hadith of Bukhari states that the shayateen said, okay, let us look in the world, something extraordinary must have happened because of which today we have deprived of going to the heavens and stealing news of the unseen. They went everywhere till they came to a place called Tihama. Here, our Prophet ﷺ was leading the Sahaba in prayer. When they heard the recitation of the Quran, they said, this is the cause as to why we are being refused access to the heavens. So when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, the doors were closed. So what the shayateen do now is, they climb on top of one another. When they get close to the heaven, the angel throws a meteor by which the shaitan right at the top is either burnt or becomes insane. Now if this shaitan is able to convey the little that he has heard before this meteor hits him, he conveys it to the one below. Like this, it comes right to the last shaitan, who in turn conveys it to the soothsayers, to these palm readers, and they mix a hundred lies, and they convey it to the people. A group of Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the reality be, uh, behind these soothsayers? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there's no reality behind them. The Sahaba asked, it so happens when these people tell you a certain thing sometimes, this thing turns out to be true. Sometimes they seem to know certain things about you, which nobody else has access to or knowledge of, besides the individual. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the little that comes out, that turns out to be true, is the little that they have heard from the heavens. And besides this, 99.999%, they add lies to this, and they convey it to the people. And yet, many of our brothers and sisters are reading these columns, and have begun to take these things true. Yet the Prophet wasallam said, whoever reads these columns, whoever comes to a palm reader, a fortune teller, or uses these programs which inform you about the future, if he takes this to be true, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, فَكَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ Then he has committed kufr and he should renew his faith. And read the kalima once again. Let me give you another example. Many of our brothers today, our young brothers, those that are in the deen, Allah gave all our brothers the tawfiq to come into the deen and act upon the teachings of the deen. They talk about matters like taqdeer, about faith. And because they can't understand it, they begin to raise objections. And some of these objections are so dangerous that you fear for his iman, it may have took him out of the fall of Islam. Yet this is from the shaitan. Why? Because belief in taqdeer is part of iman. If somebody doesn't believe in faith, he's not a Muslim. And as Muslims, we have to believe in taqdeer whether we understand or whether we do not understand, whether we comprehend, or whether we do not comprehend, and we will believe in taqdeer without question. As Muslims, we need to realize that Allah doesn't oppress us all. And at the same time, يريد, Allah does what He wishes. And at the same time, لا يسر عما يفعل وم يسألون The Almighty Allah is not questioned with regards to what He does, and you will be questioned. You get brothers talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet as Muslims, we're supposed to be talking about the attributes of Allah, the power of Allah, the glory of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, and not about the zat of Allah, Allah Himself. Because once you start talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through this, the shaitan will take you out of the fold of Islam. 